to our program from house to house. Won't you come in and join us for a while in the Word? I want to welcome you to spend some time with us in God's precious Word. I hope you're a child of the Word of God and that you have a hungry heart because the Lord has promised that if we hunger and we have a thirst after Him, we will be filled. Ladies, we greet you today and we're so grateful to have you be a part of the filming of our program that we have called from house to house and aren't we privileged to be able to have the beautiful backdrop of the home of Kevin and Talitha Bayerlin to be uh, there as our hostess, hostess for our program today from house to house. We're going to continue on, ladies, in this series that we started, and it happens to be in 12 parts. And today is going to be part nine because we're moving right along. And we're still talking about the subject of repent, the need to repent. We're talking about the believer, as well as the unbeliever, the church at large. So often as you go through the Word of God from beginning to end, you'll see that God is calling His people to repent. Because we're human, because as we move through our day, we find that many times we come short of the glory of God. Isn't that true? The Scripture says all of sin come short of the glory of God. We come short of our best for God's glory and for His praise. And so... It's important that we recognize our lack, our need, or wherein we grieve the Holy Spirit, and we come before the Lord with a heart that's an attitude that says, God, I didn't do the right thing, or I should have done something that I didn't do. Dear Lord, forgive me, and mean it sincerely, and ask for God to strengthen you and build you up in the faith whereby you can mature more, and you will walk the walk and have the talk that would glorify the Lord day by day, for we are called to be His ambassadors, the Scripture says. We represent our Lord, and so we want to pursue His godliness. We want to pursue His holiness, the likeness of His nature, which we've been blessed to, to inherit and be a partaker of, the Scripture says. We can be a partaker of that divine nature. But repentance is so critical in that taking place in our life. Um, There'll be times when the Holy Spirit's going to convict you over small things. And there'll be times when He convicts you over big things. But nevertheless, repentance is about saying, Lord, I agree with you. That isn't right. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Give me strength to be a new creature in you and to walk in you. And um, make that U-turn we talked about in some lessons back. Turn around, go the right way, if we've been going the wrong way. So we're talking about repent, and today our particular subject for lesson number nine is going to be who? Who needs to repent? We're going to focus on the backslider, the backslider. For me, this is a very sensitive subject, because I know people that have once really walked with God, and as time has gone on, their life grew cold, and then eventually they just turn back to the ways that they knew before. Or sometimes they've even turned worse. And in the Word of God, we, we see it spoken of, the backslider. And it, for me, is a glimpse of seeing the grief and the pain this is to the heart of God. Because, you know, in some sense, God refers to us as being His children. He being the Heavenly Father. And we are his children. But if you should turn the coin, or let's say, or you look at another facet of the diamond, diamond, or we might say in another aspect, the Lord uses the symbolism that he is the husband, and we are to be as his wife. We are to be his bride. The Lord looks at our covenant with him like a marriage is supposed to be. Maybe not some of these modern marriages that are haphazard and don't last, but the Lord looks at his relationship to his people like the seriousness of the commitment of a marriage. And of course, the Lord will always be faithful. He doesn't just decide one day, well, he's going to take a hike, that he's going to turn and go the other way and leave you cold. That is not the way God is because God is called faithful 
and true. He's not only true as the truth, but he is called faithful. And to his people, he's very faithful. But you know, it grieves his heart when people are so fickle that so easily they flirt with the world and pretty soon they're off playing with the world and they've forgotten about God and somewhere God gets lost in the shuffle. And this unfaithfulness in God's children breaks the heart of God. There's a place in the word where the scripture says that God says, says he said, I have wept in secret places for your pride. Yes, God does weep. God's heart is affected with a mourning. He speaks in the Song of Solomon that I love to study from, of how that the voice of the turtle dove is heard in the land. And you know, if you listen to the turtle dove, as I am privileged to get to do because I live out in a mountainous rural country, and those sweet little doves will come and, and land upon the, the telephone wires or the electric wires, and I can hear them cooing and mourning and calling for their mate. Even so, the voice of the Holy Spirit, like the heavenly dove, he's, he's in a sense with a mournful woo. He's calling. He's, he's bidding, come my mate, come my love, come after me and follow me instead of following the ways of the world. And I hope that today as the word goes forth that the spirit of God will carry this message to your heart wherever you are and whoever you are that are listening and that you will hear the mournful woo of the Holy Spirit calling after you to come nigh unto God. The scripture says nigh unto, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. He will be willing to meet you more than halfway if you will draw nigh to God while the Spirit calls. Don't ever turn your head and go the other way when the Spirit's calling because you never know. Tomorrow He might not be calling you. He might be somewhere calling someone else. And if the Spirit of God convicts you today as the Word goes forth that you need to draw closer to God, that you've been slipping back or drawing back, then may it be that you will not turn a deaf ear to the voice of the Holy Spirit, but that you will respond and you will say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I will follow. Yes, Lord, I will follow. The backslider, it, that particular word, as you would find it in the various texts in the scripture, it, it means unfaithful, someone that is unfaithful, just like in a marriage. You know what terrible grief takes place when two people have been united in marriage and especially when they have gone ahead and brought forth children into this world that are going to be affected probably more than they are. But how sad it is when one partner becomes unfaithful and the one that has been faithful lives and stands in the grief in their heart of what has been torn apart, what has been desecrated of that which was hollowed. But the heart of God, a pure heart of God, how much more his heart yearns and his heart is broken and bleeds for those that so easily turn and walk away once they've tasted of his sweet salvation and his love for them. And yet they can consider it a light thing with a fickle heart and a fickle mind. They walk away. But that in God's sight is being just as seriously unfaithful and even more, I think, than that which happens in the natural realm between a man and a woman. I want to read to you out of the scriptures, ladies, I'm not going to ask you to turn to save time, but I'd just like to read for you uh, out of the New Testament. As Paul was anointed to write under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, and he's writing to a Gentile church in the city of Corinth. And this is a group of people that he had been very much involved in bringing them to a knowledge and a walk and teaching them how to walk with God. But over a period of time, they began to draw back and begin to flirt a bit with the things of the world. And false doctrines was coming in and, and seducing them and pulling them away. And so with his pen, he begins to, to write to this body of believers. And this is what he says. And this fits for us today as well as the Lord's church, his church universal. Uh, no matter what denomination you are in, God has his people of so many varieties and kinds. This is what he says to them. He says, for I am zealous for you with a godly eagerness and a divine jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband to present you a chaste virgin to Christ. But now I am fearful, lest that even as the serpent beguiled Eve by his cunning, so your minds may be corrupted and seduced from wholehearted and sincere and pure devotion 
to Christ. He's reminding them that he was kind of like the friend of the bridegroom and that he had introduced this body of people to know Christ and to become united with Christ. And his heart's desire was that he could present them to Christ like a chaste virgin for her wedding day. And he said, I'm, I'm jealous over you with a holy kind of jealousy. In other words, I don't want anything to happen to you. I don't want anything to ruin this affair between you and God. I have engaged you to one husband, not a bunch of husbands, not different husbands, many husbands. But I've, I've engaged you to one husband, even Christ Jesus, but I'm concerned lest Satan beguile you and seduce you just like he did even the garden that you would slip away. Oh, child of God, has the enemy been working against you to get you to slip away and to begin to flirt with the things maybe that you once uh, let go of when you followed after Christ, to return back? You know, the scripture speaks of how the pig will return to its wallow and how the dog will even return to its vomit, which to us as human beings is so filthy, so disgusting. How can it be? And yet in the sight of God, God sees it no less, but but that when the believer has partaken and tasted of the things of God and then they turn back to the beggarly elements of this world, that to him it's like a dog would go back and eat again his vomit. And like the pig would go back and wallow in that mire and that muck and that nasty mud. Oh, but the heart of God grieves. The heart of God grieves. You know, the Holy Spirit is not an it. It's not a thing. The Spirit of God has personality. And yes, the scripture says, grieve not the Holy Spirit, wherein you have been sealed by the Holy Ghost. Child of God, if you've been growing cold in your soul, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to appeal to you. Draw nigh to God. The enemy and the world has nothing to offer you worthwhile but pain and heartache and consequence. But God has a royal bounty. He wants to give to you his benefits from. The scripture says he daily loadeth us with his benefits. Yes, there's many wonderful benefits in the kingdom of God for those that will follow after the Lord with love in their heart for him, responding to that love that he has offered to them. And you, you don't want to miss out on the good things God has for you. And so let's, ladies, I'm going to have you turn and we want to see more about the heart of God. You know, when you read the word, ladies, what you're really doing, you're hearing how God thinks. You're seeing how God talks. You're being able to read and look into the heart of God in part and see what his emotions and his feelings really are. But listen to the pain of his heart. When we read Isaiah, ladies, would you turn there now with me? And we're going to look at Isaiah 1. And verse 2 through 4, I'm going to use the King James Version. And this is what God is saying through the mouth of this prophet, Isaiah. And he says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. I want to say that last phrase again. They are gone away backward. Instead of moving forward like sheep that would follow the shepherd, no, they're backing up. They're backing up in their tracks. God's heart full of pain is saying, oh, heavens, hear. Oh, earth, please hear. These children that I have nourished, that I have brought up, you know, that's an investment. When you bring up children from their birth, and you nourish them. You do everything you can to prepare them for their own independent adult life. And they go away backward from everything you've fed them, taught them, educated them, prepared them for. And they go the other direction. What a broken heart that leaves behind. And it's no less for the Heavenly Father. 
That word backward in the Hebrew in that particular text means turn aside, go away, commit adultery, alienated, separated. Pretty sad, isn't it? It's pretty sad. And yet I don't want this message to be depressing. I wanted to end on a good note that we will repent. We find that our walk with the Lord is growing cold or has gone cold. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there aren't many of you listening to me on television at this particular time. And you're listening for some reason because the Holy Spirit has drawn you to do so. Because he wants to invite you. He wants to call to you. He's, he's wooing to you one more time, child. But you know in your own soul that you have gone back. You've walked backwards. You've done what it says. You've turned aside. You've gone away. You've committed adultery spiritually. You're alienated from the presence of God and you know that you're separated and you're not walking pleasing to the Lord. But I'm not here to put my foot on your neck. I'm here with a broken heart, with God's broken heart to tell you, come, today's the day because the Lord he still is carrying out his part as being the faithful one, the faithful one. Again, we can turn to Lamentations and we see another prophet anointed of God to write. And that would be Jeremiah in the book of Lamentations, ladies. Chapter one, verse eight. And listen to again what the spirit of God is saying. Jerusalem hath grievously sinned. Therefore, she is removed. All that honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sigheth and turneth backward. This is speaking of that thing called backsliding. He's speaking of Jerusalem, his lovely capital, the place that he loved and he looked towards and where the children of God were to look towards when they prayed and, and when they brought their petitions before God. And he says, these people, they have sinned. Now their honor is even despised. Their nakedness is made plain and others can see it. And they sigh with a heaviness, no doubt, of their own oppression that they brought upon themselves because they have turned backward. Again, the Hebrew in that text means turn away, turn back, draw back. We see another prophet, ladies, that God anointed to speak on the behalf of his children, his people. And here he's speaking of the, the people of Israel. And he calls her like unto a backsliding heifer. A, a heifer, for those of you that are not real familiar with farm animals, a heifer is a young female cow. And sometimes you might want to lead, let's say, that young female cow, that heifer, out, out of the barn or the stall, let's say, and take her out to pasturage. And you've got her on a lead rope and it's a rainy, muddy day and she decides she's going to balk. She's going to dig in her heels. No, she doesn't want to move. She doesn't want to go forward. Instead, she starts balking and stepping backwards, backwards, backwards. And she begins to slip in the slime and the muck and the mud as she begins to dig her heels into the mire. The Lord says, that's what my people are like. They're like a back sliding Heifer. Have you ever tried to lead a horse? Or even sometimes if you've got a big dog, you try to pull your dog and they don't want to go where they're supposed to go and they start backtracking. And that's how God considers the action of turning away from him in his wonderful love and his compassions for us that are fresh and new every morning he offers to us at breakfast time. Oh, children of God, if we could only see into the heart of God and realize how we grieve the heart of God when we turn to our old ways once we have been redeemed. Hosea, ladies, turn there with me now. Hosea 4 and verse 16. I'm going to read that from the King James. He says, For Israel slideth back as a back sliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Instead of them being like a lamb in the stall, being all grained and well and specially fed and given a priority to fatten it and get it ready for a, a special day and a special occasion, he's just going to 
Let them be fed out into a large place, like out into a big open field or a large pasturage. Instead, the special treatment isn't there. Why? Because they have balked, they have refused, they have turned to their own way. Oh, oh, how sad it is when people that have once known the things of God Sometimes even people who have been used, instrumental in the work of God, effectively so, and they begin to turn back to the beggarly elements, as the scripture calls it, of the things of this world, just like a backsliding heifer. Jeremiah is used in chapter 3, verse 6 through 8, ladies. You're close there. Turn that in the King James Version. We want to read again what God says of his people. I want you to understand why I'm using scripture more so in this particular series. I want you to understand what I'm sharing with you is not about my opinions, my thoughts, my interpretations. I want you to know that it's endorsed with the word of God. So we're making sure that that's provided for you. And it says, The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, After she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it, and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous sister, Judah, feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Here the Lord has come to a place where he has handed to them their divorce papers. Do you, do you get that as we read that text? That the Lord said, I put her away and I gave her a bill of divorce. That's like when a couple decides that they're going to divorce and the one sees that the papers are served, those divorce papers. And God said of his backsliding people that he had put them away and he was going to give them a bill of divorce. Because of their unfaithfulness, they had turned to idols. Can you imagine having seen the miracles that the children of Israel saw and yet they turned to their idols? Now, we may not turn to stone or wood or what, especially here in the, in the West, but we have other things we put before God and God looks upon them as our idols and as us as being adulteresses when we do so. Jeremiah 3 verse 14, here is the plea of the heart of God and oh, I can't help but feel this so strongly, ladies. Jeremiah 3 14 and here's the heart of God saying, turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. And I will take you, one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Can you hear the heart of God, his heart throb, crying out, turn, O backsliding children. I'm married to you. And, you know, this is the plea of his heart. You know, just like you considered the band on a man's wedding finger symbolizing that he has committed himself to that woman. God, in a sense, he said, I'm married to you, backslider. I'm still married to you. Turn, turn, turn back. You know, in Hebrews, it says in the New Testament, chapter 10, Verse 38 through 9, ladies, I'll read it to save time. It says, now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Yes, when we draw back, we rob God of his pleasure. I think of how Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, and he said, Demoth hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. This man who worked with Paul as a co-laborer in the ministry, a day came when he was tired of it, and he decided he was going back to his old life, and Paul was grieved with Demas. And you can just picture him like a young man walking away, walking down a path, leaving the ministry and Paul behind. Oh, I uh, want to bring to you how that that tells us in Ezekiel, the third chapter, the 20th verse, that when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and he commits iniquity, the Lord says that if he does not change and repent, then he will die in his sin and his righteousness will be forgotten. It will not be remembered. That's Ezekiel 3, verse 20. And we, we look at uh, how the Lord said, those that put their hand to the plow 
and they turn around and look back, God says they're not fit for the kingdom of God, ladies. That's Luke 9, verse 62. Luke 17, verse 32 tells us to remember Lot's wife. Yes, we need to remember what happened to her. She was on her way of salvation out of that city that was going to burn, but she turned around to look. Her heart was yearning backwards to what she was leaving behind. God let her be turned to a pillar of salt. The Lord writes in the book of Revelation to the Sardis church and the third chapter, verse one through five, and we don't have time to read it. And he commands that church to repent. Why? Because they had, in essence, backslidden. And he said there were only some left that he would not erase their names and blot their names out of the book of life because the majority of them had turned back from the ways of God. Yes, if God would speak of blotting out the name that was once in the book of life and erasing it, that is a very serious thing and a serious matter. Child of God, renew your commitment to the Lord today because His is faithful towards you. I'm going to ask you to join us again next time as we continue in this series. And we're going to deal with the subject of who, and we're going to deal with those that are unreached. These persons that we've been dealing with in this series will stand at that great white throne judgment, and they'll have to be accountable to God for having rejected the door of opportunity and salvation. Join us again, I pray. God bless you. Amen. And when I come before the presence of the most holy I shall look upon his face out through my veil for it's the blood of Jesus I'll be wearing Program copies available Full set of 12 lessons on CDs $34 DVDs $44 At $3 for shipping and handling No COD Original Carol Brook song album Audio cassettes $10 each CDs $14 each At $3 for shipping and handling No COD For orders and support gifts Call toll free 1-866-777-4748 Or call 1-619-445 0751. For more information, please contact Carol Brook Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1909, Alpine, California, 91903. On the World Wide Web, visit carolbrookministries.com. Email carolbrook at carolbrookministries.com. Prayer line numbers are 1-541-592-4539 or 1-619-401-9389.